Okay, all right, so it is, as you can see on the screen, I did full screen today, it is November 3rd, 2020. So, you know, I haven't done a ton of predictive societal astrology. You know, I have done a lot of, it's actually called electoral astrology, electoral, like literally, like not electoral, like we're thinking because of the actual election, but, um, you know, electoral astrology or electional astrology is basically when you time events, you use time to predict certain things in people's lives. Um, I have not really done that. I've definitely done transit predictions for people and things like that, but not put anything out there like this. All right. So, you know, obviously this is the day of the election. So what I wanted to do is um, look at in particular, you know, some people have questions about like, well, it's a show up in a president's chart who should be president. You know, you look at Obama's chart, you see a lot of things shown presidency, even with Trump. Um, again, you don't, I've said this before, it's like, there is obviously a lot of reasons why people um, don't have favorable opinions of Trump. You look at that astrology, you see why people, he still has people who follow him. Like, it's it's that Leo rising. I think he has Jupiter in a really good placement as well. Like, yes, and that's what's interesting about astrology. We can definitely look at someone and objectively say what we don't like that they say. We don't like what they did and we don't like how they speak or we don't like how they lead. But at the end of the day, the chart is going to tell you why people are still following that person. Um, so we can look at president's charts to get an understanding of like, you know, who they are and are they meant to be the president? Well, let's look here at the Neptune in Libra. Neptune in Libra here is showing us that definitely him working under Obama was a part of his fate. Um, tenth house is career. Neptune deals with dreams and illusions and just our wants though. So it doesn't always mean illusions in everyone's chart, but it means what we want, what we desire. But it also can lead to things that happen to us by chance or things that happen to us that are part of the fabric of our story. You know, these are the things that we might not have specifically planned for, but they came about in the way that they did. And we have Libra here. Um, so this does speak to the relationship, the friendship between Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Um, obviously, I don't believe they knew each other before all of, you know, Obama's presidency. But as you can see, this is, they're actually a president, vice president duo who actually have a friendship. These, it's not just this, these business partners, you know, hey, we're, it's not like, oh, I'm done presidency by Joe. Like there's clearly a friendship there. And I think that this shows here that in order for Joe Biden to even have run for president, I think he did have to be the vice president work under Obama first, you know, in that administration. Um, we do see here Mars and Scorpio in 11th house of networks. So Joe Biden has likely been able to really, um, you know, facilitate, um, good social connections with people. Mars and Scorpio is, as we know, very beneficial because Mars rules Scorpio. And this is a person who kind of goes for what they want. Um, even when we think of the fact that I know there were rumors earlier on that Obama was like concerned, like, hey, I don't want you to ruin our legacy here doing this. And so I do think, and he's a, and so we look at, Biden's a Scorpio son. So he's going to want to exert or show some sense of power at some point in his life. And so, and he has the Scorpio in the 12th house of this here. And so I do think he was inspired to run because of everything that he saw going on with the current administration. So again, first and foremost, this is not a political debate channel. I had to tell somebody that one time before where they completely ignored the astrology and wanted to talk politics. Don't do it. This is not that channel. If you know, people who know me know what I think, what I believe politically, and we have these conversations. This is not what this channel is about. This is the astrology. Okay. I just want to clear that up, clear it up for some people. So point being, um, I think that Joe Biden, I mean, you look at the 12th house. So already like his Scorpio energy mostly is in the 12th house. And so this does deal with hidden underneath the surface. I think his son being in the 12th house, he wanted power. He want, he thought about being president before Trump ran before all of this. He thought about it. Um, I do think Joe Biden needed that time. I do think he needed time for people to get used to him as a running, um, as someone run. I do think he needed time. Like I think if he had tried immediately, um, you know, um, you know, obviously he couldn't have done it immediately after Obama, but what I, you know, cause they were trans, trans, transferring, um, the, you know what I mean? The, the administration over to Trump, but I also don't know. I have to look that up. Like, I don't, you can't as vice president, if your administration is leaving, you can't just like, okay, I'm running too while I'm still the vice president. That's what, what I mean. You get what I'm saying? 
So, but I think that it took a while for us to even take Biden seriously because at first we're like, oh, he doesn't really mean this. A lot of people say they're going to run and they don't. Um, but anyway, point being with all the Scorpio energy in the 12th house, his son being in the 12th house, when you have Scorpio, which wants power to consume, um, and by wanting power, I don't mean Scorpio is trying to be power hungry. I mean, Scorpio energy is about joining and taking resources in order to build themselves up and transform themselves. Um, and again, that's just the symbolism of it. It's not saying a person is bad if they doing that. It means that Scorpio knows how to find their own resources or find something that has what they need and, and be able to take that in. Um, I do think he probably thought about this way before he actually ran. Even when he was president with Obama, maybe he had thoughts of being president um, and thinking about it. Um, but we see Mars being in the 11th house of like, he can get people to, to buy into him, you know, 11th house, Mars people. And sometimes it can come across as a very fixed nature, um, but they can get people to buy into them. And I think the Sagittarius rising that he has, it's like, he probably um, can attract people from different diverse groups. Um, Sagittarius risings appear tolerant. Now, again, I know the thing with, um, I know that Joe, just like any politician, I think for the most part, Joe Biden has said things that have rubbed people the wrong way. Um, there is no perfect candidate. I want to be clear on that. Again, I'm not a political channel, um, but I'm not, you know, in, in when we think about it, though, it's like he made a really good decision by picking Kamala Harris as his running mate, because I do think the energy around the presidency changed once he picked Kamala. Now, you know, in terms of, you know, some of the other, um, you know, facets of his chart. Um, again, I'm not going to go over all of this because it's not a birth chart reading. This is just looking at power. I mean, Pluto in Leo in the eighth house. Okay. And he has Jupiter in the eighth house. Yep. He, I, I, those are definitely really strong planets to talk about power to, to, to someone's ability to transform themselves. When Joe Biden was vice president, no one was thinking, oh, he's going to run for president. No one was thinking that maybe he was, as I said before, the hidden thoughts, the 12th house, Mercury in the 12th house and, and Scorpio. Um, there's a lot of things he thinks and feels as president that we probably will never know about. There's a lot of layers to Joe Biden. Um, and again, I'm not saying whether that's good or bad or indifferent because, um, I have 12th house placements too, so I'm not going to sit here and demonize them. I never demonize 12th house placements, even with the challenges. But if we look here, um, the fact that he has a stellium in the 12th house, there's always layers to people with 12th house energy that we don't know. Now, Pluto is about transformation and, and obsession and power, but it's in Leo. Okay. So it's, 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 there's a deep desire for him to be president. He wants to be president. Um, and the interesting thing is in another, um, in a different, um, uh, on a website, that I sometimes used to look up just the chart placements, they have his North node as Leo, okay? And this, so what I use, this is the software that I use, they have his his North node in Virgo. So it's interesting because I'm more gonna lean more towards the Virgo, I mean the Leo. I mean, this is at the zero degree. Um, zero degree means, you know, right? Like um, it, it can be a little bit chaotic. It's not literally in that sign. Like it just got into that sign. It doesn't know what it is. It's like the first day at work, you don't know. Right. You don't know. This is just your first day at work. You don't know anything. You're, you're an employee. You're an employee. You got the badge and everything, but you don't know the lay of the land. That's kind of like what the zero degree does. Whereas the 29th degree is when you're ready to quit that job. The 29th degree is when you're like, I'm ready to get out of here. It's my last day. I ain't even going to act right today. So, um, I would move towards the North node in Leo, but again, this, this is, this is, you know, you have to be careful. Um, but I do think that, I think that, I mean, if we're looking, even with the placement being in the ninth house, we're dealing with discovery experience, um, opening yourself up away from what is familiar to you, you know, having to go through this journey of, you know, I do think vice presidency helped him get the confidence with, you know, to run for president, especially with this Virgo being on the midheaven. Virgo is analytical. Virgo has this kind of cautiousness about them. Virgo is trying to accumulate something. So as a Virgo midheaven, I think it was smart for him to not even put his plans out there, to not even talk about it, to not even do these things until he was 100% sure that this is what he wanted to do, you know? Um, and so now I'm looking at Juno in Cancer. I mean, not Juno, I'm sorry, Jupiter in Cancer. I mean, Jupiter in general deals with luck, benevolence, um, things that are beneficial to someone's whatever area of life that that Jupiter placement is in. I mean, Jupiter and Cancer, there is, I guess this, this is also speaking more to this family thing, his, his connection to his family, 
you know, Joe Biden, um, you know, he, he dealt with a lot within his family. I think you can see that, you know, with the Saturn in his seventh house and Saturn can bring hardships. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I'm, I remember the full story, but his first wife, I can look it up. Um, I believe his first wife passed in a car accident and I believe it was a child. Yeah. The, the child there as well. And so he does have obviously a second marriage and he has two sons. Um, but his, in, um, in 19, I just looked up, 1972, his first wife and their infant daughter passed away in a car accident, you know. And so what we, I think, like, what we're, you know, what's interesting, you know, huh, that, yeah, that is interesting, especially even with Uranus um, being conjunct that, right? Uranus means sporadic change, things that just happen, um, things that you can't really plan for, you know, in Saturn, which can bring hardships. It, it can bring, you know, as much as we can talk about Saturn, it's just, oh, it's just a hard lesson that we're going through. For some people, it can be more of a devastating nature, you know? Um, and so what we're looking though for right now is the fact that here we have um, Jupiter, Cancer. This is really talking through his family lens as well. Um, and him finding, I think Jupiter in the eighth house and Cancer, Cancer family relating to feminine energy as well, um, does link to him marrying again a second time. If, you know, if someone didn't have, and it, it lasting a long time. So unfortunately that, that, you know, that fatal accident happened, but at the same time, he was able to find love again. But in general, when you have Jupiter and Pluto in the same house together, there is a power dynamic showing that your power can be taken positively. Again, this is not saying, this is not, again, the point of this video is not about you like him, you don't like him, who's the best, who's not. This is just the astrology of like, is Joe Biden, we already know Trump won presidency. Is Joe Biden, does his chart show leadership? Does his chart show or what type of leader he might be, right? Because we want to look at like the first house, we have Sagittarius here. Okay, so he's going to need to make sure he sticks to what he says he's going to do. Because Sagittarius has a lot of optimism, a lot of great ideas, but Sagittarius energy sometimes needs to hunker down and be like, no, this is the focus. Because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and is so expansive that it wants to do so much. And it wants, you know, so that's what Sagittarius sometimes can be linked to exaggeration. Um, Mercury and Sagittarius people especially, but it can be linked to exaggeration because they're like, oh, I want this. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, let's do this. Let's just do it. But it's like, did you plan for it, Sag? Again, I'm not hating on Sag energy. I have a Sag moon, but it, it works very differently with a Sag moon individual, what we are kind of a little too optimistic and too expansive about. Um, so, you know, we also can look at the, the fact that his moon is in the fifth house in Taurus, uh, moon in Taurus. I mean, he has this fixed nature, you know, the sun and Taurus. And I think that even though he has a Sag rising, where I just said like Sag risings have to watch their outer present presentation because people can be like, wow, you're selling me this, but what do you really want us to do? Wait, are you actually going to do this? I do think his fixed nature, especially his fixed Mercury and his fixed moon can help him. Um, because that is like, you, you know, truly what you're trying to embody and what you're trying to do. Um, I do think since he has a fifth house moon, he's going to have to really, when he becomes president, balance himself. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. Um, if he becomes president, um, becoming president, you know, um, it's going to be a lot. And so I do think that for people with moon in the fifth house, they always have to find something that they enjoy doing. They have to, or else there's going to be a lot of immense stress building up. Um, most likely because moon in Taurus knows what it likes. It knows what it wants. It knows what it wants to do. And the fifth house can bring about joy. Um, so, you know, I do think that he, he, sorry, <laughs> video finished. Um, he is going to have to, um, even more so than when he was vice president. I think he has a leg up because he's been vice president. He already knows. Like, I think that's going to be a benefit. But at the same time, he hasn't been the actual leader of the country. And so that is something that he's going to need to watch out for. Now, if we look at Joe Biden's transits, let's look if there's any conditions. Again, this is November 3rd that I am recording this. Um, do these do these um, placements show an indicator that he's going to be president? Um, just off the bat as an astrologer, Unless something really weird happens with votes, which we're, you know, again, what I want a, an honest election period. Um, I would say astrologically, it, the conditions do fit for Joe Biden to win presidency. The conditions fit. The conditions fit. Um, well, first of all, we look at Joe Biden's transit. We have Venus and Libra. Venus and Libra, guys. Venus, people drawing to you. He's are, you know, there's a few counties that he's already won that people didn't think he was going to win. All, you know, all off these preliminary votes. Libra, I mean, right now, Mercury is in Libra today. Mercury goes into Libra. It already went into Libra. So we have this connection 
between that and Venus. Venus is in your 10th house. You are con partnerships. You're getting partnerships from other people in, regarding to, regard, in regards to your career. We also have Mercury and Libra. People listening to you, people viewing you as favorable. Well, let me, you have people for the first time who did vote a different way last election saying, I'm going to listen to what Biden has to say. I'm going to listen to him. Okay. Again, I, I keep saying this in the middle of the video in case people join in different times. I'm not debating you about who you like, who you don't like. I'm not a po po political channel. There's plenty of them that people can go to. Let's look at the astrology of it. That is the point of my channel. Um, and also his son is in the 11th house right now. You know, and again, I'm using Placidus here, but I mean, even if I wasn't like this, I mean, I think there's already, anytime you see a lot of planets placements on this side of the, the, the chart, we are diving into other people. I mean, yeah, like our, our, our ability to impact other people. Now you have to look, these are personal planets. These are personal planets, Venus, right? Venus, um, Mercury. And the sun, they're personal planets. Your ability as a person, like your traits to influence other people. See something in 11th house, which deals with society, that is a beneficial indicator. Um, we also have, he has the moon and Gemini in the seventh house, your ability to relate to people. Your ability for people to say, I can relate to what he's saying. Again, I'm just saying this is what the astrology is saying. Um, of course, we also, in his transit chart, he has all of these plans. He's been preparing for this. Even before he announced it, he's been preparing for this. I mean, look at this. You have Capricorn in the second house of foundation. He's trying to cement his legacy. Yes, he was Obama's vice president. He's trying to cement his own legacy as Joe Biden president. And I mean, look at this. Um, you know, we also know that Jupiter in um, on the 12th is when they go really conjunct. They meet up the 22nd degree Jupiter and Pluto. But in general, all this energy of Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in Capricorn, it has to go somewhere. It has to manifest somewhere. Um, so I, I think having that there, the second house is of solidifying yourself, grounding yourself, being, um, acquiring what it is that you've been working towards. You know, um, we know that, you know, Neptune is, I'm not going to touch Neptune. Neptune's been in Pisces in his house since he was vice president. I don't think that's super significant. I mean, now if I was doing a whole transit chart for Joe Biden, yes, it would be significant, but I'm talking about the election and we have Mars and Aries in the fourth house. You know, when you have Mars and Aries, obviously there's direction and drive. And we talk about the fourth house of establishing yourself. I mean, not establish, I'm sorry, about home and establishing your home front and what it matters to you and what's important to you. I do think that um, it's really hard to, this is not really necessarily for his chart showing about his family, um, because obviously his attention right now is on himself. Uh, but at the same time, I do think that what this is showing, remember the fourth house is also our emotional core, our emotional center. It is the most purest form of our emotion. Whereas we go to the other water houses where we have something else going on there. Um, th the other water houses deal more with others, right? Even the 12th house, which can be hidden, compassion, other people, giving your gifts to other people, all that. I'm not talking about that right now. The fourth house though, I think it's like, this is an emotional thing to him. This is not just, I think he really does want it. Again, that's, that's just what it is. Um, um, it's Mars and Aries in the fourth house is showing like your drive and direction is all pointed emotionally in one direction. So yes, right now there's a lot of things that he's not even, you know, worrying about right now because he is solely focused on this election. And it is an emotional one. It's an emotional one because this is a lot of high tension. It's a lot of hard things going on right now in society. Um, there are a lot of things that are, that we didn't see in past elections that are a part of just our current fabric of society, people's mindsets, what people are doing. Um, there's a lot of high emotions. Um, there's been like, you know, there's been a lot of emotions over things that are happening in America right now. So he, it, this is a very interesting place and time to be running for president, but we have to do what we have to do. We already know that. And yeah, that is basically it. I would personally say, and this is November 3rd, seven o'clock, eight. It was seven o'clock eight. What am I talking about, guys? Seven o eight, seven o nine. That I'm doing this video, and I'm simply looking at the transits to say, does this show a possibility to win? And um, again, I will say yes. I mean, especially that Venus. I mean, th that this all of this here, this tenth and eleventh house energy. And I know some people use whole signs, and some people, but guys, even if you use whole signs, that would then place Libra in the eleventh house of legality, of coming together of 11th house, people looking at you and saying they're going to follow you, people listening to your ideology. So even if for those people who use whole signs, you still would see that. But this is why I like using Placidus because here I'm saying it's just, this one right here, Venus and Libra. 
Venus and Libra. And it's at the seventh degree, which gives you that raw new energy. But it's not the zero degree, where the zero degree is unsure. The seven degree is like, you're, you're like, oh, let me try this. Let me try this partnership. Let me try this union. So I would say based on this astrology, I would say yes.